Stop this at once! What have you done? As someone who appreciates console exclusives making their way to the PC platform, there always seems to be some form of disconnect, and there's only so much I can tolerate. Horizon Zero Dawn on PC was always a fantasy, but now that it's real, I'm not even sure I care anymore. The developer has already made some critical mistakes, even before launch. So let's get into those, shall we? For the majority of this video, my gameplay is set to medium and locked at 60 FPS externally, so keep that in mind. Assuming you're aware of the game's price on PS4 and that it's been added to the PlayStation Hits lineup, meaning it's 25 AUD brand new, Guerrilla Games had the audacity to release the game on PC with a full retail price tag of 75 AUD on both Steam and Epic Games Store. At first glance you may be saying, well they have to pay people for the port etc etc, I'd be inclined to agree, though I would have respected them if it was 40 AUD with say a 10% discount before release, but at 75 AUD without discount at all, is more than just a slap to the face, none of your future customers needed, Gorilla. Okay, but why is the price an issue? Now that reviews are out, it's definitely clear that this was not a port that had the same level of love and care, or even attention to detail, put into optimizing the PS4 version. Before release, the developer noted that every user has to install shaders, which they say can take up to 15 minutes depending on the speed of your SSD or hard drive, specifically SSD. Hold on, since when do PC games have to install shaders? Besides Call of Duty, why is this becoming a new trend? Answer! I've done only what you asked. To raise it, yes. We said nothing of love. Not to mention, some features straight up don't work, such as anisotropic filtering. Some animations are still locked at 30 FPS despite running the game at higher frame rates. They also note that some systems may experience stuttering during world traversal, camera swaps in cutscenes, and even trivial things like UI changes, like quest updates. How do you screw that up? These are generally issues that should be ironed out well before the beta phase of any game development. So it's quite appalling to hear about these issues even before I've downloaded it, with those being some pretty basic PC functions. To charge full retail for a game they know performs like an unfulfilling mustard soaked hot dog with extra mustard, before the game has launched it already sounds like a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. That's even with the day one launch patch of 30 gigabytes. Oh, and did anyone actually see that 30 gig update? Because I didn't. All this before the game's even released. Oh boy, this is gonna be a fun video. The Great Chamber where all mother slew the metal devil and gave birth to you. Okay, last bit of saltery, I swear. Before I get into the meat of this discussion, get this right, to add more salt and vinegar to a wound that already hurts, I've been looking all over the Steam forum since launch and thought I was doing the community a favour by putting together a list of every issue the game suffers from in a single thread wrapped up in a little bow for the developers to take a look at. Not only did none of the moderators pin the damn thing, even after explicitly asking them to do so, they instead locked my entire thread. The devs then named some random dude on reddit for helping. I'm sorry, what? Not only was my thread first, I even sent it to the heads of the studio via Twitter, so they definitely knew about it. After posting to reddit though, the developer finally gave me the credit I deserved. Enough of that, let's get into what happened to Horizon Zero Dawn on PC. The benefits of porting a game to PC means that you not only allow more people to enjoy your game on another platform, but it's also expected that higher fidelity textures and user configurable settings are present. Don't get me wrong here, the game looks amazing at Ultra, but quickly falls apart due to poor performance and lack of optimization. I struggle to understand how something like this is even allowed, but here we go again, a developer that wants to rush a half-baked PC port with features that don't work as intended. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if the port isn't ready, I'd much rather you spend the time to fix it than to shock everyone with the announcement and ride the hype train to release, when it's not actually finished. This was the mistake the Batman Arkham Knight developers made. It was next to impossible to fix after going gold. That game still isn't fixed. The developers just gave up. Thankfully that doesn't appear to be happening here, but I do fear that if they can't fix it to a relative standard, they'll simply give up as well. So let's dive into what might be causing this instability across the board. The developer has noted under patch 1.02, reduced memory used when streaming textures. And in patch 1.03, they note, fixed a GPU resource leak which could build up over time and cause instability. Hmm. Okay, cool, but what about the issue where texture information isn't being correctly flushed from the GPU, causing it to use the same amount of VRAM when switching between 
ultra and medium. So if you want to tell me you've fixed something, please actually fix it. You'll begin to understand why VRAM usage is a problem if we take a look at the minimum GPU spec for the game. The minimum spec listing is a 3 to 4 gigabyte GPU, and recommended spec listing is a 6 to 8 gig GPU. This is heavily misrepresented by the developer. We can clearly see that the minimum GPU spec is a lot lower than what the game actually requires currently at 1080p, even on medium, which is around 6 to 7 gigs of VRAM in this start section. It's a cave! How is it using 7 gigs of VRAM? This is where users with 4 to 6 gig VRAM GPUs will run into missing geometry or even missing texture issues because the GPU is physically incapable of storing the information needed, therefore can't draw it on the screen. So they really need to work on their VRAM distribution because it's just not working. Have I not kept the vows as the stones do? Despite that, the game runs relatively poorly. I don't expect to run every title at Ultra on my machine, but for this particular title, the textures aren't overly detailed at Ultra 1080p, so I'd expect to be able to run it, no problem. Here's a comparable area from The Witcher 3, for comparison. See that glorious 2.5-ish gig VRAM? Wow, that's a thing of the past. This is what proper optimization looks like. Granted, The Witcher 3 does have stuttering problems that was never fixed, by the way. CD Projekt Red aren't perfect either, but at least their game runs well, you know? Unlike many others, I didn't run into many of the startup crashing or texture-related issues. That said, I noticed that after a recent driver update and recompiling those pesky textures caused this weird noisy ground texture. So there seems to be multiple issues with the way the game compiles shaders. A, they take way too long compared to other game engines that use a similar method, and B, they aren't consistent. So already a particular troublesome feature, knowing that more issues may arise each time the game decides to cache things. So the developer might want to look into this behavior. I know this isn't a fair comparison, but I haven't seen any other game require this texture caching method at all. No other DX12 game that I own besides Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So what the hell is going on here? To further hit that nail in the coffin, if we focus on the game being a terrible port, though it is improving, pointing at these issues will hopefully provide some insight as to what the developer needs to prioritize. No matter what the settings are, the game still refuses to use 99% of my GPU. I will say that since launch, the performance at least in the starting section of the game, has increased and GPU utilization is slightly improved, but still not 99 to 100%. It's not all unicorns and rainbows though. The game is now using more VRAM with patch 1.03 than it did day one. Yes, this is a smaller area and only a single test, but still, there shouldn't be vastly different results from what I actually get and to what the developer claims to have improved. An enunciation of gratitude Killers and slavers! Yeah! Killers and slavers! So with this knowledge, we can already assume that Horizon is trying to max out all available VRAM despite which settings you choose. This is similar to the behavior of how the PS4 version works. Since the PS4 only has 8 gigs of GDDR5 RAM, the GPU has to share this with the rest of the console. Unfortunately, there are potentially many issues that crop up when you simply port a game over to PC. I'm no professional, so hopefully someone can shed more light on how this works, but my understanding is, if you port something from PS4, you have to account for the PC system RAM and the VRAM of the GPU, either separately or in tandem. Because RAM usage is vastly different from PS4 to PC, assuming they're the same, or assuming the game engine will magically fix this when the game is built from within the engine is quite foolish. The only way I was able to get the game to run decently was lock the game externally to 30 or 60 FPS. This is where I have to assume the game was originally targeting a 30 FPS release. Completely my own theory, but bear with me for a minute. It appears that the developer quickly realized that it would be crucified by the PC community. They were absolutely right. <laughs> Therefore, seemingly removing the 30fps lock before release without taking the necessary requirements to optimize the game for an unlock frame rate. The game at 30fps locked is nearly flawless. Despite the game still crashing, there is still no explanation from the developer as to why the game is so poorly optimized. Now, I know that people do throw around the words poorly optimized like it's the next cool phrase, but what people don't actually understand is how that actually works. What is optimization? Well, for a start, it's effective utilization of all the hardware involved aka CPU, GPU, and RAM. It's almost as if the people who tested it were asleep, and when it came to knockoff, they simply said, yep, all good. This is definitely the behavior we will continue to see if things like this keep getting blown under the rug. I'd really like to know how someone on their QA team didn't bother testing on both AMD and NVIDIA hardware, or if they did, how could you allow something like this to go through beta, let alone be released to the public? Unfortunately, there is no quick fix for unlocking the frame rate from 30 to 60 FPS or higher in engine. If it was originally designed, 
combined with 30 FPS animations. The only explanation as to why it performs this way is that it must be tied to the physics engine. Again, this is my own theory and I have no proof to back this up. However, you'd think that something like this would have been top priority for the developer to fix before release, but apparently not. I mean, come on. The first thing you notice is facial animations playing faster than they should and lip sync is horrible. That's a lot of berries. When the game becomes immersion breaking based on the facial animations before the player has even started playing, you've got to fix it. Go and see if you can find some more. So you expect me to believe, as a customer, the game has been out for over a month now, that even with extensive testing, alpha, beta, pre-release, release, and now five patches later, that you didn't know or have any fixes for any of this? That sounds to me more like a lazy development cycle. I really, really don't want to say it, but I hope this doesn't become another Batman Arkham Knight. There has also been little to no notice for most of the issues I or the community have reported. Saying thanks is one thing, but there's still known issues from launch, and still things present from the PS4 version, like what are you doing? Since the PC version isn't a remaster of any kind, we can also assume that the same bugs have crossed over into the PC version. Forget about everything else for a moment. How does someone miss this during testing? The inner QA person in me, seeing this, just hurts. The first playable sequence in the game and I'm already greeted with terribly baked shadows, disappearing reflections based on the camera position, and pixelated clouds. Kind of defeats the purpose of actually having cloud settings, right? Terrible port aside, how? Do you miss this? I'm not going to go through every little detail of the game here, but this is just what I noticed within the first 30 minutes of playing the game, so... Um... Where did my light go? I noted about 8 things that are still present in the PC version of Horizon in both my Reddit and Steam threads. Links are in the description. At this point, I don't even think they're going to be fixed. I've loosely gone over a few of them, but let's try and understand why some of these still occur. Texture related oddities normally can't be fixed if the intention is to port the game as is, but still fixing platform specific bugs, etc, etc. This means that all the little graphical bugs are still present in the final PC build, versus the developer fixing them in engine then building the game with an override patch that fixes them. Nah, that it's far too complex and more of a headache than it needs to be. The usual approach is to leave it in. I'm not going to compare the PS4 and PC version directly because Digital Foundry has already done that. Though I just wanted to give you a taste as to what the developers missed with the PC version. The prayer lantern is yours. I made it for you. I do respect Gorilla for continuing to fix many issues the game suffers from. Though they're not really focusing on the big ones like VRAM or, you know, optimization. The most important thing here is transparency. Being open about what the next patch will fix or improve, even just being in contact with the community and making a presence on both Steam and Reddit with pin posts so people can see them would be greatly appreciated. They only seem to be pinning patch notes. Cool man, but more information please, because they're not posting much on Twitter or Facebook about the state of the game. It's kind of disappointing actually. Now with Sony announcing that they want to bring more first party titles to the PC, this is definitely the time for them to pull their finger out and fix Horizon quickly. Otherwise fans will lose all respect for them and avoid Sony PC ports altogether. Also, for those comparing Horizon's performance to Death Stranding, get the hell out of here. At least compare it to something that's actually got, you know, trees and other things in it. Keep it up, mate. I really do hope they iron out the kinks, but for now, set your game to medium and lock at 60 FPS externally for a somewhat playable experience. Until they fix the VRAM management and GPU utilization, I feel like we'll be waiting a long time for the game to be in its optimal form. I believe in you, Gorilla, but I certainly don't appreciate the shit port and charging full retail for it. That's a fucking scumbag move. Next time, don't release your bullshit to the public before it's fixed. Sick of this garbage. Next time, hire me. I'm Brett Madigan. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to share your experiences in the comments below. But seriously though, what happened to Horizon Zero Dawn on PC? I also don't appreciate being a free beta tester.